OK, let's get back to Liverpool and owner John W. Henry saying the club isn't for sale. Let's cross live to the Anfield Raps. John Gibbons. John, really good to have you with us. Thanks for coming on the show. Let's start with those comments then, but from the owner. Um, how are you feeling about what he said, that the club is not for sale? Yeah, I'm, I'm not particularly surprised, to be honest with you, because, to be fair, when the story first broke, that they were looking, you know, they were using bankers. They said it was for investments, and, and that's what they were cleared on, and, and they issued a statement quite quickly. And so it's, it's fairly consistent with that. I think a lot of people... You know, got excited about a potential sale and, and thought that it might mean sort of more because they had instructed you know these two huge banking firms to, to find investment, but they were always fairly clear. So, I think to be fair to FSG, it is it is consistent with what they've always said, and um, that's not to say that obviously if a huge huge offer didn't come in that they wouldn't wouldn't listen to it. But I think it is you know fairly consistent with what FSG have always. You know, come out with which is if there's investment that can help kick us on, then then they'll they'll, they'll sort of be open to that. How vital is this investment if you're going to compete financially with other clubs? Obviously, Manchester City, Chelsea now, Newcastle now, potentially Manchester United now. How vital is this extra money? Yeah, it it is big. You know, you don't want to put it that all down to transfers really, because there's there's lots of other things that that lead to success, but. The, the squad has started to look a little bit tired. You know, it's been fantastic for this football club. You know, so many of these players, they, they've won every trophy that there is to win for Liverpool, but we've started to to look a little bit jaded and that there's a, a few areas on the pitch that could certainly need, you know, some investments and, and players are getting more and more expensive. You know, there's, there's lads who oh, I've never even heard of now going to, for 70, 80 million. So, so it's not cheap. It's not going to be cheap in the summer. And if Liverpool and FSG are, are serious about, about staying at the top and competing for all the trophies, then a large amount of cash needs to be spent. And if FSG haven't got it themselves or are prepared to go into their pockets and fund it, then, then they need to find that investor it is. And so hopefully it'll be soon, sorted sooner rather than later and they can plan uh, for the summer and we can get some some really good players in that can hopefully you know make sure that we're competing top of the Premier League rather than where we are at the moment. Just on that, like you say, it's not cheap getting players in nowadays. How much do you think the club needs to spend then to get Liverpool back challenging for the title? Yeah, it's 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 a tricky one really because you start saying amounts like two hundred and fifty million, three hundred million, and it and it sounds so much, but. You know, if you want Jude Bellingham, which they do, then he's going to cost half of that. And so a big chunk's gone already. I think I think two elite midfielders and maybe a third, you know, is, is the is the main thing. There's a couple leaving on the sum in the summer, you'd have thought, on contracts and, and a couple of others who, who you'd like to play less games than than they are at the moment just because of their age and, and the stage of the career we're at. So if you're thinking three midfielders, then and one of them's Jude Bellingham, then it's already two hundred and fifty million pound plus. And I think they probably need a sense of half as well so you are talking 300 million which is which is a lot but you know that that's what the top clubs are spending you look what Chelsea have done the last two windows to, to not really kick on you know if, if truth be told and so so they are, they are the amounts that we're talking and it might it might sound you know un, unusual to, to think about that as a normal window but that's where we're at what about tonight's game then form seems to have picked up a little bit for you lately do you think you're getting back to your best not quite, uh, but getting there. I think what we've seen from Liverpool the last couple of games is a lot more like it. It's a lot more of the identity that we associate with this Liverpool team. You know, with the, the pressing, the, the tough to beat, and then from an attacking point of view, some of the play has been really good. It's great to see the forwards linking up again. You know, they've looked a little bit like like strangers recently, which which is understandable when you bring in you know new players in and, and players who aren't necessarily used to the system and what the manager wants and there's language barriers and, and all sorts going on. But it's been great to see not just the forwards scoring, but them setting each other up and you know, in the last few games, because when the when the front three were at its best, when it was was Mane, Firmino, and Salah, it was it was interchangeable. They were all as as dynamic and as attacking as a threat as each other, and the and they all you know love to set each other up as much as score. And so, getting back to something like that, you know, would be fantastic. So the firepower's there. There's a bit more on the bench now, uh, which is really good as well. Um, you know, the likes of Jota and Firmino coming back as well, who are, are big game players and have got goals in them as well. So we're feeling a lot better about going. Into to this Real Madrid game than we were a couple of weeks ago, that's for sure. Yeah, what are you expecting from the game tonight? I mean, you find yourselves against Real Madrid again. What are you hoping for? 
Yeah, I think it's going to be a very different game to the one we played before because it's at Anfield in front of a, a big crowd and, and everyone, Liverpool fan who I've spoken to in person or online are just so bang up for this one. I think it's going to be an amazing atmosphere and, you know, the two finals are a little bit different. It's a 50-50 split and obviously with Paris, with what happened before the game, you know, it felt sort of very flat and everyone was, was sort of in a bit of a daze watching that. The, and the two-legged one before... Uh, a, a, Two, two or three years ago, wherever it was, was was behave, play behind closed doors. So, you know, I remember being out, outside um, a, a pub just just down the road watching it when when that was sort of legal to do that, but you couldn't couldn't go into the game, and it was quite a sort of strange experience, really, not being able to to go in and cheer them on. We will be able to cheer them on tonight, and so I think the Anfield crowd does change the dynamic from those previous four games, and hopefully together we can have another fantastic European night. A couple of weeks ago, a lot of people were saying that Liverpool winning the Champions League is their only chance of being in the Champions League next season. Has that changed after the last few weeks? Yeah, it has, yeah, and because because a lot of the teams down there are, are inconsistent and, and, and will drop points, and and that's that's the nature of, of being in, in, you know, in that area of the table, really. And so I always felt with Liverpool that if we could put a run together, we'd have a chance. You were just starting to doubt whether we could ever put a run together. Now, listen, it's only two wins. You know, it's not enough and we are still in eighth position. But you're starting to, you know, as I said, at the, the, the top, look a little bit more like the Liverpool old. And the Liverpool old was that we're able to, you know, to string large numbers of wins together. So we can do it, whether they will. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. There's some, you know, decent teams ahead of us who, who obviously desperate to, to get in there as well. But it's, again, looking more possible. Uh, it's on to us, really. It's up to Liverpool, you know, if they want it enough, if they, if they can show it, the, the qualities and they can put, you know, run together. It is there for them. It's in, it's in touching distance now. Well, maybe not quite, but not far off. All right, do you know what's coming now, John? What's the match prediction from you for tonight? <laughs> uh, I said 1-0 on the Anfield map yesterday, so we'll stick with that. I think it's going to be tense. I can't see us blowing them away and finishing the tie tonight, unfortunately, as much as I'd like to. I think they're too good. But with the Anfield crowd and a better performances recently, I'm going for a 1-0 Liverpool win. All right, well, good luck with it, and we'll speak to you, you soon. Thanks, John. Cheers, thanks a lot.